Um, apparently, the Republicans are inching closer to a spending deal. Now, don't be fooled by that headline that has appeared in several publications around the country. Uh, this happened yesterday. They, uh, they're they trying to get their filthy caucus together, the Christian fascists. Um, newspapers and, and television still call some Republicans. I do not. Uh, there are a few Republicans left, but they are... Uh, married to a rotting corpse. They are Christian fascists. That Christian fascist party is trying to beat the hell out of uh, regular Republicans and try to come to, you know, end these internal divisions and reach an agreement that would allow the Christian fascist budget to advance. Huh? Um, yesterday, The cowardly little prick Stephen McCarthy, who claims to be the Speaker of the House, which he is not, he gave in to the demands of the real extreme Christian fascists for steep spending cuts, all of which are not going to survive in the Senate. I mean, this is an exercise in stupidity, futility, asininity, what these Christian terrorists are doing in the U.S. House. But they have to play, since they can't lead, they can't legislate, they have to play. Now, the, the, this deal that supposedly the Christian demons are trying to work out among, among themselves is not going to bring Congress closer to averting a shutdown in 10 days. It's just not going to happen. We all better be prepared for this. I hate this, but I don't see how we can avoid it with this crop of Christian devils that are loose in the... Uh, in the U.S. Congress. Uh, And it remains unclear whether Republicans could even reach an agreement among themselves. (laughs) All of which brings into sharp focus the precarious hold that poor old Kevin McCarthy has on his speaker job. Right? However, there was a lengthy meeting yesterday uh, between McCarthy and the Christian Devils. A uh, matter of fact, it was last night. And when he came out of that meeting, he, he McCarthy said he felt optimistic that he was close to having the votes to pass a stopgap funding measure to keep these federal agencies open through October. <laughs> One month. Great victory there, Kevin. You miserable asshole, you. Uh, now, That tentative agreement or an understanding, whatever you want to call it, that uh, the government can be funded for one more month is bullshit because of these hardline Christian demons who have made it very clear they're not going to let that happen. You know the ones I'm talking about, these really disgusting son of a bitches who look like human beings, but they're not. They're devils right out of a hell portal uh, someplace in Georgia or, um, I don't know, they, they come erupting out of the guts of uh, uh, the earth uh, created by Lord Satan <laughs> to, uh, to pay homage to the Antichrist. No, it's not McCarthy, it's Trump. The Antichrist, meantime, is uh, in his, one of his uh, um, golf clubs uh, devouring baked children and just doing whatever the Antichrist does for fun. Anyway, behind those closed doors in that meeting last night, uh, McCarthy, apparently, according to published reports, he proposed this bill to keep the government over for one month. And that would temporarily set overall government spending during that month of $1.47 trillion. That was the funding level in place before the pandemic that some of these right-wing devils have been demanding since last January. Uh, His deal would also include stringent border restrictions and create a commission (laughs) to tackle spending and debt. Now, I'm going to get to the spending bullshit here in a moment because what the Christian devils are proposing is nothing you or I or any normal person would agree to. Um, Now, in in, in what the New York Times identifies as a sign that the U.S. House was shaking off the paralysis that that has gripped it for most of the week, 
McCarthy said he planned to bring a Pentagon spending bill back to the floor today. That was supposed to have happened today. If you remember on Tuesday, a handful of Christian devils blocked a vote on it, which gave McCarthy a very embarrassing smack right across his uh, puffy cheeks. Blam! Now, Republicans or Christian devils that came out of this meeting said two of the rebels, two of the rebels, they're, they're called rebels now, these these cloven-hoofed devils that are wandering around in their Gucci shoes. Huh? Uh, anyway, members of that caucus that came out of the meeting said two of the rebels, that would be Ken Buck of Colorado and Ralph Norman of South Carolina, uh, these two demons had changed positions and would now allow a vote on the bill to release Pentagon spending to proceed. Always with the weapons, right? Always with uh, the, the big argument. Have you noticed this big argument? How could the United States not fund the military? You know, forget education, forget public health, forget nutrition, forget environmental issues. How could how could these Christian devils not fund the military? Jesus Christ. Um, even if this stopgap bullshit, you know, spending for one month were to succeed, which it won't, it would still put these Christian doubles on a collision course with the Democrats who control the Senate. And by the way, in the Senate, there is bipartisan opposition to the cuts that poor old Kevin has laid out and bipartisan opposition to the immigration restrictions. Always with the beating up on immigrants, right? Have you noticed this? Now, my grandparents who came to this country, came through Ellis Island at the turn of the last century, uh, a little bit beyond that. But my grandparents told me that the bigotry that they experienced when they came to this country was incredible. But at the time, the capitalists in this country needed cheap labor. The capitalists still need cheap labor. It, 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 I don't think the capitalists are against this. It's the Christian demons who are against this, the ones that think they're going to wind up with a white Christian country. Um, But my grandparents told me about the opposition to their coming to this country, the bigotry that they experienced. And I, I guess for that reason, my grandparents were never racist that I'm aware of. Uh, and, and I mean that. Uh, it was an issue that just didn't come up. I never heard my grandmother refer to colored people. I never heard my grandfather, who was a lusty Italian, I never heard him use the N-word. And I think part of that, even though both prongs of that racial bigotry was very, very extant back in the 20s and 30s and 40s, dear God, um, I think it was because of their own experience that they knew what that kind of discrimination could do to a person, to a family. And I've told the story before, my grandfather wound up uh, as a trash collector uh, um, in Chicago, pushing a push cart, like like a lot of immigrant Jews did in New York. But he pushed a push cart and collected scrap anything and lived within the Italian uh, community in, uh, in Chicago. Years went by, he saved up his money, he got his citizenship, he moved to a small town in northwest Ohio and opened his own business. Sorry for the digression. So, um, it's not clear whether McCarthy is going to get the support for this latest bullshit that he's trying to keep the government open for one more month. Um, At that closed-door meeting last night, um, Eddie Munster, a.k.a. Matt Gates, the Christian demon from Florida, said he knew of at least seven Republicans who would vote against any stopgap funding measure to avert a government shutdown, no matter what the spending level. And Eddie Munster would not say who the seven were. Well, so what? He knows, right? Now, that assertion from Eddie Munster received some pushback from other uh, 
Christian devils. I, I, I guess these Christian devils, they don't like the fact that Eddie Munster is trying to push his head above the crowd and become the leader. So Christian devils are taking pot shots at him. This is what demons do. I mean, none of these demons, they all worship Lord Satan or the Antichrist in this case, and they don't want some little punk ass like Eddie Munster rising up above the crowd. So Representative Patrick McHenry uh, from North Carolina, who worships not only in the Church of Trump, but also the Church of McCarthy, uh, he said it was too soon to start thinking about turning to Democrats for help. <laughs> I'll perish the thought. And Mr. McCarthy, Mr. McHenry, called the impasse part of what he called the, quote, natural give and take, <laughs> end quote, of finding an overall funding figure that Republicans could agree on. Uh, McCarthy, I'm sorry, McHenry, too many Macs here. McHenry said after the meeting, quote, the first go of it in the House of Representatives is always within your own party. That's what the speaker is trying to do, build consensus among Republicans. <laughs> Good luck with that, um, Kevin. Um, the speaker, McCarthy, also said he was not ready to give up and try to get help from Democrats. And by the way, that's an option uh, likely to just give the, the, the Christian demons gas pains and increase their effort by scum like Eddie Munster to remove the jerkwad speaker from his position. This is, this is what McCarthy's afraid of. He doesn't give a shit about uh, um, uh, anything other than his survivability as Speaker of the House. He wants to go through the rest of his life being introduced as, and now, ladies and gentlemen, the former Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, Kevin Jesus Christ McCarthy, or something like that. Uh, before that meeting yesterday, McCarthy told reporters, according to New York Times, quote, anytime we have an obstacle, let's not quit. Sometimes it takes longer than other times. There are a lot of Republicans who said they would never vote for me as speaker. <laughs> but look, Kevin, you're still not the speaker. You've got the title, dude, but you more, know more of the speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives than I am. Maybe even less so. Uh, but that battle, what did he have? 15, 16 votes to try to get to the speaker's position. Most of the no's or most of the opposition was led by Eddie Munster. It was that battle that was coming back to haunt McCarthy. Um, and, and McCarthy is still sucking up to that band of uh, hard right demons who demanded all kinds of concessions from him, including promises to uh, cut back on federal spending in exchange for their votes to make him the speaker. He probably had to give up his firstborn child. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Or maybe he had to put, he had to slaughter a lamb and put a mark of blood over his doorway before he went to bed after he got uh, elected. Who knows? Now, McCarthy, if you saw this yesterday or the video this morning, primarily this morning, Pearl Kevin was trying to appear not the least bit disturbed. He was smiling. He was shaking hands. He was greeting tourists in the Capitol Rotunda. Um, well, that was going on, though. Uh, his pals, who are not necessarily uh, the totally insane bastards like uh, Eddie Munster and uh, the Q bitch from here in Georgia, they were getting very frustrated by the opposition. And some of these... Christian demons were accusing other Christian demons of, quote, moving the goalposts in an effort to undermine McCarthy and get rid of him as a speaker. Can, can, <laughs> as bad as McCarthy is, can you imagine who they would try to put in as speaker to replace him? No, don't think about it. Uh, Representative Steve Womack, who is a uh, Christian double from Arkansas, 
and a senior member of the Appropriations Committee. Old Steve said, quote, it may be a situation where the personalities clash, uh, few as they may be, but sufficient in number to make a difference. Uh, that's what we're facing. Personality clashes? None of these son of a bitches have any personality, Steve. Come on. These are ro- robots. These are devils that, that are being manipulated by the Antichrist who sits wherever he sits and squats on his large ass in a golf cart, getting out of the golf cart every once in a while to whack at a golf ball. I mean, come on, Steve. And other lawmakers who also consider themselves to be allies of poor old Kevin, uh, they said that the stalemate, this inability to do anything was costing House Republicans leverage in the upcoming funding showdown with the Senate and the White House. Boys, let me tell you something. You ain't got no leverage. Uh, No, seriously, I realize Joe Biden is a deal maker, a negotiator, but not on this. No. And as far as the Senate, are you kidding me? Other than Manchin, I mean, there's not a single Democratic senator who is going to become a traitor to the American people. Manchin doesn't give a rat's ass because Manchin is heavily invested. He makes millions from the coal industry. So forget Manchin. Um, another uh, Christian devil from Louisiana, Garrett Graves, he's a uh, representative. He said that the right wingers were also putting themselves in position to take the blame for a shutdown, even though they have this opposition to Biden administration policies. But you see, Biden administration policies have absolutely not a goddamn thing to do with a government shutdown. It's the minions from the hell portal, the Christian devils who are doing all of this. Uh, but Garrett Graves, the Christian devil from Louisiana, said, quote, this is a disastrous administration, and you're having Republicans that are going down a path or executing a strategy where they are going to take Joe Biden off the front page and slap their own mugs on it. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, That's according to the New York Times, that quote. Well, nothing you do, Garrett, makes any sense. Nothing you or the rest of you minions from hell make any sense at all. You're not on the surface of the planet to govern You have been puked up onto the surface of the earth to destroy. Read your book of Revelation, dude. (laughs) I mean, come on. You're not here to build, to help, to assist, (laughs) to make life better. You're here to burn and kill and destroy. And I'm, I'm not saying that. Read your own book. Read your Bible. Jesus Christ, so to speak. Now, with all of this up in the air, poor old Kevin uh, says he's going to keep House members in town at least through Saturday. And during that time, he and his uh, weak-kneed supporters are looking for a way out of this mess that Kevin created. I I mean, what did Kevin expect? When you bargain away your soul, read Dr. Faustus. When you bargain away your soul... What the hell do you expect is going to happen in return? Eh? (laughs) Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network it's a listener supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast so hosts like me mike malloy can, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like we're often controversial but we're never boring weeknights 9 p.m in the east 6 p.m in the west on the progressive voices network always progressive always on i'm mike malloy keep it lit